All right, guys, we are uh, getting ready to fish the second Bassmaster Southern Open Tournament on Douglas Lake here in Tennessee. Practice has been tough. Uh, I've, I've been able to get a decent number of bites, but I cannot find the good quality fish. I had one, one spot that really was really good, uh, and it was some shallow fish way up the river. And since I've been here, the water has dropped uh, I want to say about two and a half feet. It's continuing to drop. It's down about seven feet from the high, which was about two weeks ago. So it's continuing to drop. There's a bunch of fish that are up shallow. A lot of them had actually spawned already. Uh, the problem is now they're sitting on beds. Well, they're not even sitting on beds. They're sitting with their face looking at the bed, which is on dry ground. So that has created some headaches. For, uh, some of us shallow fishing I spent you know I, I came here needing a top 10 to have a, a decent potential shot at qualifying for the elites in the last tournament if you guys aren't familiar with the structure the uh, each division the top three anglers after all three events uh, will move on to the Bassmaster Elite Series and at this point I finished 41st in the first one out of 225 so in order to have a, a decent shot at moving up or to being in that top three with only one tournament left, I need like a top 10. So I came here with the idea that I'd fish to win and really chase the fish that I thought would be uh, the caliber to get into the top 10. And you know, to do that, I think you're looking, you need at least 16 pounds a day. And I think the best way to do that is to fish offshore and find the fish, the, the pre-spawn females that are grouped up somewhere. I don't know where that is. I found one offshore spot. I found a couple of offshore spots, but only one has had fish on it the two days I've checked it. The other spots, uh, I, you know, I found the fish and I'm pretty sure they're bass. I, I didn't get to catch them, but I know I'm pretty sure they're bass just by the way they were acting. But I went back and checked it and they were gone anyways. And that happened in a couple other spots. So that doesn't mean that they're not going to be there tomorrow. I'll check the spots again. The other issue is being able to get onto the fish. This place is not a big lake for 225 boats. Uh, the majority of the fish are, uh, I'm going to say shallow or up in areas staging to move up. And that kind of limits the, the, the areas in the lake. You know, a lot of the offshore structure places that would come into play later in the year are not gonna play nearly as much as uh, they would at other times of the year. So it's really made the field, the, the playing field small. And with that many boats after you know multiple days of practice, a lot of those shallow fish have been beaten up pretty good. Um, man, I saw the bite was really good the first day and every day I feel like the bite has gotten harder to the point now where I think it's not gonna be super easy to catch a limit. I think the majority of anglers will have a limit, but um, it's it's not as easy it was the first day I was here, which was Sunday, so th three and a half days ago. But we're gonna go out and we're gonna see what we can do. Uh, like I said, I, catching 12 pounds isn't gonna do me any good. I mean, there's potential you could cash a check with that, a low bottom check, but if I finish 41st in points again, I just don't think I'm gonna be able to, to have a shot at one of the top three places. So. You know, for me, it's, I'm kind of all in, you know, if it means I fish out deep the entire time, uh, trying to catch bigger fish and come in with a zero, that, you know, that, that'll be the case and I'll be all right with it. I'd ra really rather not be in the position I was just in, which is where you finish the first out of the money. I, I lost the tiebreaker for the last check. And so you don't get paid, but it's good enough to move up to there to continue fishing the next tournament. And, you know, if you finish, 100th you know you don't have a shot at the top three so at that point it's not even really worth fishing the other two tournaments but anyways so just to go over what i'm doing you know i i, I do have a couple of deep spots um that i'll be fishing you know one is a true kind of river ledge and then the others are just kind of some deep points where the fish are setting up and on those i'm fishing a couple of things uh this is a Luke Clausen casting jig with a small three inch uh, pit boss. 
and I'm using that on like some of the deeper points where it's like 20 to 25 feet just kind of throwing it out there dragging it around on some of these deeper clay points with some mixed in rock and then I'm throwing a, a swim bait as well this is just a 3.3 actually I didn't pack I didn't think I'd be throwing a swim bait at all, at least not little ones. And I, uh, I went through in practice, I had a couple of bags of 3.3 power swimmers. They did not come into play, so I just went to the, or I, I used them all up. And I went and had to buy a couple of uh, packs of Kitex. So these are Kitex. Uh, I think the color is Sexy Shad. But the, the uh, tackle store did not have the power swimmers that I wanted. So we're going to give those a try. Those are kind of my deep baits, and then when I'm up shallow, I've been getting some bites uh, around some wood and some kind of rock transition zones, you know, classic staging places where the fish are going to be moving back to spawn. And I'm kind of throwing a handful of different things. This is a uh, half ounce Berkeley War Pig in a sexy shad color. That is done, uh, has really been working really well. Um, a lot of fish that's that's once you get further back into some of these drains with the falling water i feel like the fish that are in the backs of the coves are getting sucked down into those drains and uh, you can really be efficient and cover a lot of water with that war pig and you can see that's my last one i actually have gone through two others in practice you can see how beaten up and banged up that they are um, so i just put a new one on just to just to put a new one on uh, but this is quickly becoming one of my favorite baits and you guys know I love uh, lipless baits and I kind of have one on tied year round. And this is just a good scenario where uh, it's working really well but it's not a bait you would necessarily think about throwing right away. So I've got the lipless, here we've got a uh, war eagle spinner bait, just a half ounce. Again, that's a good bait for just covering water. There's a bunch of areas you get into with the red clay banks here where uh, you get some some mud lines coming off the bank and because of that you know a spinner baits a great bait to throw it's a good bait to cover water and fish on some of those transition zones as well and I've been getting a lot of bites on that and then uh, lastly I've got another this is a smaller jig this is a Kitek tungsten jig you guys know how I feel about throwing tungsten jigs on rocks so when I do get into some areas that have uh, some good ledge rock kind of transitions, pre-spawn female staging areas. I'll throw the, the little tungsten jig on there. Uh, this is again just a three inch pit boss on the tail. And I've had a good number of bites on that as well. Uh, so those are kind of my go-to baits. You know, I've got another five or six different rods rigged up for just those one-off casts that you need to make. I've got a few bed baits rigged up. I have found I've probably found 20 fish on beds. The problem is none of them have any good size to them. I've got a couple that are two and a quarter maybe, but again, you know, a bunch of two and a quarters are not going to do me any good in terms of getting to the next level through the open. So I don't even know that I'm going to spend time fishing for any of those fish just because I'd, I'd rather be fishing with the hopes that I might catch a five or six pounder and not wasting my pound on a two or my time on a two pounder. So that's it, guys. That's the uh, the pre-tournament uh, wrap up. We'll see how it goes. Um, man, I, I really don't know what to expect. I feel like things are changing every day. The water continues to drop, which is moving fish around quite a bit. And uh, you know, you stumble on the right spot, you can get you can catch some nice fish in a hurry. I mean, the first two days of practice I, I caught a couple of good fish the last day and a half I haven't seen anything that was super exciting so hopefully we can get back on the uh, days one and two of practice and find the right fish so stay tuned guys we'll have uh, tournament recaps from each day coming up uh, shortly after this one thanks for watching